Hey, yo, foreigner, you crazy for this okay, one. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that thing I'm jab riding when I'm left hooking. Fiends said they love me cause they know I keep that sack moving. Sad to say, but this is the life that I have grown in. I had to hustle, skipping class, man, I was true in. I can flip some packs and teach you how to do it. This the real deal. Better watch your back cause people will kill. Kill Bill, kill switch on the Glock, yeah, this the real real. And people spin around them blocks just like a Ferris wheel. But that's enough of that. Let me tell you about my life and where I grew up at. I grew up in the south of Topeka. Then I moved to the east in the streets and I ain't fucking with neither. I ain't the type to go with kill or go and sit on that block. I'm the type to get some treats. Hey, what's good with it? It's your boy Trey Wildcast. We want to take a quick break and tell you to tap in with our most recent videos, tap in with all our social medias, and thank you for watching. Oh. Welcome back to the Bucket Discussions podcast. This is the podcast. We're going to be on the stat sheet. We're going to be on the narratives to bring all that real, authentic, far sports conversation, man. It's your boy Taj. It's your boy TJ. It's your boy Mike. It's your boy Big Mike. It's your boy Lakers fan, Chiefs fan. We ain't going to get the hats today. Two, two, one, a.k.a. say a prayer for my homie Pop, man. I'm going to go ahead and pass it to my boy, Jay Coop. Yo, you already know who it is, man. Boy, Jay Coop, um, as he already says. So, hey, man, I'm ready to get into this episode. We got had, we had a busy week during the trade deadline. You know what I'm saying? wasn't no major trades, but yeah, yeah. a lot of minor ones. You know what I'm saying? Guys going here, guys going there. So, I'm excited to get into it. That's pretty much what the whole episode is going to be about. But before we do that, is there any church announcements? Church announcements, man, the most important part of church, as we all know. Guys, it's pretty much the same this week. Just make sure you guys are tuned in on YouTube. And, hey, man, I want to shout out Jay Coop. He's been going crazy with Jay Coop's clips, man. Much respect to him because he even covered the game where his team lost to the Pelicans, man. He's giving you his analysis, man, as a real diehard Clippers fan and just a fan of the league in general, man. So make sure you're tapped in. Make sure you're focused on that, man. And, you know, I'm coming with the reaction videos, man. You know, I'm figuring out my content piece, too. So just make sure you guys are tuned in, liking, sharing, subscribing. And telling a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend, man. We greatly appreciate it. Now, with that being said, this week, Cooper already talked about it, man. The trade deadline happened. It wasn't anything super major that took place. But there was a lot of smaller trades that really made teams, you know, better. You feel me? I think Joel and B said it best, man. A lot of teams got better over the trade deadline. And that that's fun for competition and that's fun for the league, man. So I'm going to let Coop really dive into some trades, man. And we're going to speak on that. You know, we're going to dump, jump into the jump ball segment. And then, you know, this is going to be basically our, our trade deadline special, man. So I'm sure. going to go ahead and let Coop take over. Sure. Okay. So obviously, man, the I mean, I guess you could say the biggest trade of the trade deadline. As many of you guys know, man, TJ Washington got his way to Dallas. You know what I'm saying? For Grant Williams, Seth Curry, and a 27 first round pick. But the Mavs, they didn't just receive P.J. Washington. They got two second-round picks, one in 2024, one in 2028. But who really gives a damn about that? How you feeling about P.J. Washington to the Mavericks, man? You know Luke has been needing some help. So how you feeling? I feel like it was a it was a cool trade, man. I don't think it was uh, anything too crazy. Uh, you told me before the show, bro, I didn't realize a lot of Mavs fans were kind of upset about, you know, the trade conversation as far as giving up a first-round pick, bro. But – I feel like when you have a Luka Doncic, man, it's always worth it to to pull the trigger, which I'm a little bit more surprised that Mark Cuban, as more of an evolved owner, hasn't been trying to put more talent around Luka, you feel me? But I think PJ Washington, man, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun move, bro, a good move for for uh Luka, man, as far as just surrounding him with talent. Cause we know bro's a talented player, man. And for PJ to get out of out of Charlotte, man, I feel like Charlotte's a a, a very young franchise, man, with no real leadership. You feel me? So I feel like him playing with Luke is going to be exciting. Also, Kyrie Irving, man. And can we shout out Kyrie Irving, too, bro, for having uh, a regular a regular season, bro, not a Kyrie Irving-type season, man, where it's a lot of drama, a lot of stuff going on. Man, He seems to be at peace, bro. He seems to be yeah. relaxed. He needs to be chilling. Yeah. So, the only thing that's kept him out is injury so far. But other than that, he's he, been doing it. That's good to see, bro, because yeah. he has better with Kyrie Irving in it, man. So I'm happy to see that. But – um, as far as Grant Williams, that was a move that we were pretty excited about on this podcast when it happened, you know, yeah. in the uh, offseason, bro. But it didn't seem to really work out. And I was hearing, like, you know, just on Twitter and just the NBA media, bro, like a lot of people weren't fans of uh, Grant Williams in, in Dallas, which was kind of crazy because I thought bro was a, a cool, likable guy, man. But 
Uh, that was rough. Um, Seth Curry, we all I feel like we all love Seth Curry, man. He's a great player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the trade though, bro, I'll probably give it like a a B plus, man. A B plus, B plus. like a solid trade. I hear you. For I sure, you bro. Man, and, and the impact on the Dallas Mavs. You think this is like a a real shake up type of move for the for the franchise that's gonna help them kind of get over the hump? Because we haven't really seen the Mavs do much in the playoffs. Yeah, no, you're definitely right. I mean, besides, you know, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with my Clippers, you're right, they really haven't done – I mean, besides getting to the Western, Western Conference Finals once, they really haven't got past the hump they wanted to. So, yeah. other than that, bro, uh, I agree with you. I just feel like – I mean, I've seen a lot of people compare uh, this Luka Dantage, you know, Mavericks team compared to that first stint uh, with LeBron James and the Cavaliers because I guess, like, oh. LeBron – God bless you. He was always, you know – Yes, sir. He was always just – I guess having the front office try to trade, you know, players, young pieces for, uh, you know, guys that they think they can uh, Pete right now. You know what I'm saying? So it just, I don't know. I feel like it's it's kind of true. There is some truth behind that just because it seems like they're trying, I don't know. It just seems like they're losing their step every, like, I don't know. They keep trying to get ahead of themselves. Like they just traded a first round pick in 20 for in 2027 for PJ Washington. And although PJ Washington is a great player, I do think the team got better overall, but I just feel like, damn, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, trading your your draft comp because what if Luca does get unhappy because the team isn't good enough, and then he and you know what I'm saying you left with nothing else, no other draft picks and shit. So, I just think the Mavericks got to be a little bit more careful, you know what I'm saying? And instead of trying to trade all their draft picks and just try to, I don't know, but I feel like PJ Washington was obviously a good addition. Though he's definitely gonna help. Uh, he had size. You know what I'm saying? He had scoring, takes a little bit of the pressure off Luka and stuff like that. And Grant Williams, man, like you said, I from what I heard, man, and what I was seeing, like, I guess he just, like, rubbed people the wrong way in the locker room and stuff. I seen that uh, not too long ago he switched his Luka Dante shoes for Jason Tatum's. I guess they wasn't fucking with that. They was like, oh, hell no. You know what I'm saying? So they got his ass up out of there. But, it, no, it's going to help them for sure. I really think the Mavericks are going to be – that's what they needed, though. You know what I'm saying? Just another big body to throw against teams like the Clippers, like uh, the Lakers, too. You know what I'm saying? You're going to need someone on LeBron, someone you could throw on AD, even though P.J. Washington ain't guarding that. But it's like – you know what I'm saying? So they definitely need it. But they also got uh, uh, Daniel Gafford from the Wizards. So how are you feeling about that? You think that's going to help them in any capacity? Because, I mean, they obviously only got one big. You know what I'm saying? They got uh, – Dwight Powell, if you consider him a big, and then they got their their rookie whose name I'm forgetting right now. So, um, yeah, man, how you feeling about that? Bro, I feel like in the NBA, size is starting to become very underrated. You feel me? For like sure. a lot of teams in this NBA playing small ball and not really taking the 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 big position serious, bro. So yeah. I feel like them adding some more depth, and we're gonna talk about. Oh, I don't know if we'll talk about OKC adding Bismack Biyombo, bro, but. I feel yeah. like always adding like a quality backup center or a center that you could just throw in a lineup if you want to to start. Yeah. I feel like that's always going to be something that's going to pay off, especially when you got a Luka Doncic on your team, a Kyrie Irving on your team, bro. And then yeah. when you come in those series, when you got to match up with guys like Anthony Davis, man. I mean, Chris Stapps, those type of guys, bro. Like Chris Stapps, really, he not – He's not really going to bang with you inside, bro, but it's always good to have, you know, bigger bodies because we see teams like the Golden State Warriors who – don't really have any bigs, man. And it's, you see how it affects their team, man. No, definitely. Especially when you see, like, uh, smaller guys having to fight on the inside for rebounds and boards, bro. It's not yeah. it's not ideal, bro. So it's always good to have size, man. For sure. Daniel Gaffer, man, he's, he was a pretty big uh, piece in, you know, Washington. Not, and now, granted, they don't really got a lot going down in Washington. But Daniel Gaffer is probably the most, like, glorified player. Like, I've seen a lot of the fans were upset about losing him. But yesterday, man, he came out with 19 points in his debut. For the Mavericks, you know what I'm saying? So he he was doing his thing. The first uh possession he had, man, it was a alley oop from Luka Dantas, as you can imagine. So, you know, the crowd was going crazy. He was doing his thing. Buck is uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Daniel Gafford's a really underrated big. Now in their uh, other backup or their other big is Derek Lively, the rookie who I who I was blanking on earlier. But uh yeah, man, I just feel like the Mavericks, they're probably definitely one of the winner winners in the trade deadline because they only sent out uh, uh Rashawn Holmes in a twenty See, that's another thing. They gave out another 2024 first round pick uh, from the Thunder for Daniel Gafford. So it's like, man, two first round picks giving up for these it's guys. Up. It's quite, yeah, man. Now, granted, I will say the only like benefit they do have is these guys are like under contract for, I think, at least more than two years. So I guess they have that going on for them. But 
man, giving up two first round picks for some guys that aren't really, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It's kind of tough though, you know what I'm saying? But I definitely think the Mavericks won the trade, or at least or one of the winners in the trade deadline. But um, the next trade we do got, man, from the Philadelphia 76ers, man, they're sending out Forcon Korkmaz, uh, Doug McDermott via the Spurs, and they also sent on a 2024 second round pick, 2029 second round pick, and cash considerations for Buddy Hield from the Pacers. So, how you feeling about this, man? Obviously, Joel and B is going down uh, with that meniscus. No telling if he's coming back this year, but they went. They, hey, man, there's potential he might come back if they're making moves like this for Buddy Hield. Man, makes me think that you know he might be able to come back. But how you feeling about this trade, man, from Buddy Hield? Man, I've always been a fan of Buddy Hill, but um, yeah, bucket. I hope this does mean that Joel Embiid's gonna be able to come back, bro. But it, from what I've seen, it didn't look too good, bro. They said he's probably yeah. gonna be like one or two months at this point. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm not sure exactly what the 76ers record is. I think they're like top five in the in the uh, East. Yeah, right they've now, been slipping, but, bro. They've been slipping. But yeah, bro. I mean, as long as they can stay in the hunt, bro, I think they'll be fine. But you just don't want to see John B go down, bro. We know obviously he's having a great season, but we figured he was gonna go down with an injury at some point, bro, because it's kind of like clockwork, bro. He's a he's a big guy, big body man. But Buddy Hill, though, bro, I'm a I'm a fan of that. Uh I'm a fan of that move. I think anytime you can add shooting in this league, bro, is important because we're in a in a league where motherfuckers like to shoot threes nonstop, bro. But hey, man. I, I I'm a fan of the move though, bro. I don't I don't know if it's uh a super crazy game changing type of move, bro. But I mean, you don't need those moves to necessarily win in the league, bro. So I'm them. I say a C, bro. I'll say a C for this, bro. Because honestly, they didn't really give up that much. Like they didn't give up anything too crazy. Yeah. Pork Moss, though, bro. I'm a fan of him. He's a shooter. But you know, I mean, you're adding Buddy Hill, one of the best oh. team shooters in the league, bro. So yeah. I'm 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 a fan of that move, bro. For I'm sure. Yeah, I I gotta agree with you too. I'd probably get that move, probably. Man, I'd probably just give it a B just because Buddy Hill, man, he is he is a bucket. I think he's going to be good around Tyrese Maxey, John B when he comes back. You know what I'm saying? Guys like that. But uh, like you said, uh, um, I was, it was a three-team trade. So Marcus Morris actually went to the Spurs, but he got bought out too. And, yeah, man. So That's your guard, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> but there's a lot of guys on the buyout market we may have to talk about later on. But um, as for Buddy Hill, man, I really do – I do like this move, man. He's averaging like 21 points on 38% shooting from the three-point line. So, he's he's definitely doing his job. I think he's going to come in and help for sure. Uh, for Con Korkmaz, man, he, like you said, they didn't really give up that much. He's uh He's been demanding a trade since, like, 2018. So, he finally got out after, like, six years. So, I bet he's happy. But, yeah, other than that, man, I, I like this trade for the Sixers, but we just got to see if this really all just determines if uh, Joel Embiid comes back. If so, I really do like this move. But if not, I mean, it's just kind of a cool move to, you know, keep him afloat. You know what I'm saying? But, um. Yeah, man. Moving on to the next move, man. We got Suns acquiring Royce O'Neal and David Roddy, man. Uh, it was a three-team trade again. So, Suns get Royce O'Neal, David Roddy. The Grizzlies received uh, a 2026 first-round pick swap from the Spurs. And then they got Chimetsi Metsu from the Suns. And then Wadana uh, Yada Watanabe. I forgot about him. I, now he's on the Suns now. You know what I'm saying? Or he was oh, from the Watanabe, okay. <laughs> yeah, he was. he's that shooter from Brooklyn. I, that name always throws me off, but... No, they got him from the Suns, and um, yeah, man, so the Nets receive Cater Betts Diop from the Suns, and they also get Jordan Goodwin from the Suns, you know what I'm saying? So, another three-team trade, man, but I feel like the winners out of this was probably the Suns, since they got the rotational player that you would probably add, you know what I'm saying? And the Grizzlies, man, they're just going in the tank mode, it seems like, but Royce O'Neal and David Roddy, how you feel about this, you know, going to the Suns, man? Like you said, bro, I feel like depth, bro. Yeah, like that's that's very important, bro. Especially for the Suns, man. Like they have their main pieces, but they yeah. have their top guys. They just gotta, you know, stay healthy during the right times, bro. So I feel like adding those two players, bro, is good depth. You feel me? Yeah, for sure. I hear that. Um, how what would you how would you grade this move? I mean, obviously they didn't give up shit, but how you like these uh, role players? Man, I feel like I'm kind of being a little bit harsh, man. But let's uh actually let's do a B, bro, because you're adding depth that you need. You feel me? Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, honestly, they didn't give up that much, to be honest. I mean, they did give up a 2026 first round pick swap. So I don't really know how valuable that is. But I mean, you get Royce O'Neal, a pretty good, you know, wing defender. You know what I'm saying? Some, when you're going up against teams like the Clippers, man, or even the Nuggets, 
you're going to need someone to throw on Jamal Murray, Paul George, Kawhi. Royce O'Neal's done a decent job of that in the past. And then you get David Roddy, another young, you know, big body. So, Boris, but, yeah, man, he's, he's doing his thing this season, too. So, yeah, man. But, oh, another move coming up, man, the one that you like probably the most was Gordon Hayward to the to the Oklahoma City Thunder for uh, Trey Mann, David Pertance, a 2024 second-round pick and a 2025 second-round pick. So, how are you feeling about this, man? Man, I was excited about this move, bro, and not necessarily just because I feel like they needed to make the move, bro, but I really wanted to see them add a big, bro. That's what I, I was really looking forward to, you know, this deadline. But mm -hmm. I'm just a fan of Gordon Hayward, bro, as a player, as a person, man, and to see him come to OKC, which is kind of like – the adopted team of the Bucket Discussions podcast, bro. Sure. I'm excited about the move, but I am also sad to see Trey Mann go, bro. That was one of his, like, fan favorite, bro. So, yeah, see him go is kind of sad, bro. But, I mean, Gordon Hayward, I want to see what he does, bro. And and obviously you said he you think he should start over Giddy, bro. So, I want to see what happens with that man and see if he can really crack the rotation, like, ASAP. You know what I mean? Yeah, most definitely. Um, From what Coach said um, on the Thunder, I forgot his name. He's, he's I, Yeah, but his name is it's Mark. Mark Dayton, man. Mark Dayton, man. I can't remember his name, but I'll, I'll yeah. get it. That's all I needed to hear. Mark Dayton, man. He said he probably isn't going to play until sometime after the All-Star break. But, you know, Gordon Hayward always being injured, that's kind of to be expected. But I will say, I like you said, I do think he should be in the starting lineup just because I think he adds, you know, just more. He stretches the floor a lot more than Josh Giddy because you see a lot of teams leaving Josh Giddy wide open. You know Gordon Hayward would probably knock down that shot at least most of the time. So, Giddy's not much of a three-point shooter, bro. He's sure. And plus, I think, he'd, I think he'd be nice running the second unit. Josh Giddy, I think he'd do a decent job of that. But like you said earlier, man, the Oklahoma City Thunder, man, we wanted them to add a little bit of more big, uh, big man depth, and that's what they did uh, in the buyout market. They went ahead and got Bismack Biombo, man, pretty underrated Bismack big. Biombo, man. Yes, sir. How you feel man. about that, man? I'm a fan of the move, bro, because I feel like Bismack is a horse, bro. He's a horse on the on the boards, bro. You need those big guys like we were just talking about earlier, bro. You're always going to need big guys. You're going to need that, bro. Like, shout out Chet, bro. He's a – Chet's an amazing player, bro, but I don't think it's fair to ask him to really be the sole, like, big and the, the, the main guy banging on the boards. And they have some smaller guys, bro. Uh, Jalen Williams, bro, he's a – I feel like he's kind of like a – he could play big for them, you feel me? Yeah, but like, only like six, eight, six, nine. So that's yeah. small for a, a center in the league. You feel me? So at Bismack, bro, he can come in there and just do his job. Go in there, rebound, do what he needs to do, bro. Yank him out the game. You feel me? Yeah, that's really all they need. How do you feel about the move? And before you say that, I'm gonna grade this this pickup because they didn't give up anything, but they just picked him up. But uh, I'm gonna say A plus, bro, because this is what I was looking for from OKC. Ooh. I wanted to see them pick up some debt, bro. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, that grade is a little bit generous, but like you said, the you know the Oklahoma City Thunder they adopted the favorite team of this channel, so we showing them a little extra love. But I do like this move, man. They got some veteran leadership. I mean, granted, if he does play or doesn't play, either he's gonna add you know leadership on and off the court. So it's like that's I feel like that's something they need is just someone like Gordon Hayward. And plus, man, he's gonna come in down the stretch when you know they're struggling to get a bucket because Josh Giddy's being left open for three. Put him in, man. He's going. He's probably going to knock down a bucket, make some decent plays for the Thunder. So I do like that, especially, you know, come playoff time. And that's for Bismack Biombo, man. Like you said, you can't go wrong with size. Bismack. He's one thing about him. He may not be the most talented player, but he's going to hustle, man. He's going to outwork. Hard, man. Yeah, he's going to try to outwork the other team's best, you know, bigs and stuff like that. So, yeah, man. I really do like this move. I'd probably give it a B plus, just because. I mean, man. It, like you said, it does hurt seeing Trey Man go, but other than that. They got picks to throw out for days, so they ain't really losing shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I thought they were gonna do a little bit more, bro. Just yeah. cause so much ammo, bro. But let me ask you this before we move on, though, bro. What's up? Okay, see, man, we see them like really. I feel like they made a crazy jump this year, bro. Like obviously, we did not expect them to be one of the Definitely. top in the West. You feel me? Like last year, they finished. You know, they didn't, they we thought they had potential to be in the playoffs, man. But you know, they're a young team, so we don't really have too many expectations for them, bro. But realistically, come playoff time, bro, do you think this is something that's going to be sustainable, bro? Because watching this team, they have the pieces, bro. They have the depth. I mean, obviously, we feel like they need to add a big here or there, bro. But do you feel like this team could really make that push in the playoffs, bro? Like, when it really gets serious and they got to play those those tough teams in the, in the West? I mean, it's really going to be tough, man. It's really – the only thing I can really say is it's going to come to, it's gonna come down to being, like, how good is Shea going to be? You know what I'm saying? Because – they're going to have to see y'all, bro. They're going to have to see the Nuggets. Yeah, exactly. Lakers, so, if the Lakers end up making a push, bro, it's yeah. going to be it's not going to be easy. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, I mean, honestly, man, 
it's all you can ask from Shea is just to try to be the best player on the court at least one of those games in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't have to be, you know. I mean, honestly, for I don't know, it's it's tough to say because this is a young ass team. They weren't even projected to be this good during the regular season. But like you said, man, it's a different game. You know, come the playoff time. So I don't know. I feel like they could probably, if I had to put a ceiling on it, I think a Western Conference. I think they could make it to there. But a finals, I think that that might just be a little too far. Yeah, they could to reach. The conference finals. Yeah, I think they have a chance to make it to the conference. But you know what I'm saying? If everything – because you know how the playoffs go, bro. Once we get to April and stuff, you see a lot of guys starting to go down around the league, and it's like sometimes it feels like everything just goes the right way for a certain team. Like, I guess we could say Miami Heat, for example, in the past couple of years, man. It, I mean, uh, granted, yeah. they play they play tough, but a lot of injuries, a lot of, like, minor things, like Giannis not playing the first two or three games of that first-round series. I think we all, you know, could agree if he did, maybe the series would have been a little bit different. But shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like they have a good a, a puncher's chance at least. You know what I'm saying? A puncher's chance. But if I mean the way the Clippers playing, the Nuggets playing, even the Timberwolves, the way they play defense, I think the Thunder could probably beat the Timberwolves in a series. I don't know about the other two teams, but it's tough, man. I'm I'm I don't know, man. I think the ceiling would probably be a, a Western Conference appearance, to be honest. You think they can make it that far? Or is that reaching? Nah, bro, I don't think it's too crazy. I just had to go look real quick because, like, there's a team like the Mavs that we feel like is a is a team that, like, right now they're not looking, like, too crazy record-wise. Bro. They they, just, they, bro, they just laid the whoop down yesterday on the Thunder yesterday by, like, 30, 40 points with, with the new addition. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? You're right. You're definitely right. Like, a team like that could give them a fit. Yeah, it's real It's real uh, bunched up right now, though, in the West. Like, everybody's kind of, like, you know, a game, a game and a half back. You know, just, it's like, tough, man. the top – Top four, four seeds, bro. And I mean, like, if you get matched up with a team like that, Lakers are 9 seed. I know everybody's like down on the Lakers right now, bro. But I mean, but they've been hooping. You got to respect been. them, though, as far as like just playoff yeah. experience and pedigree, bro. But it could, it could, it could get crazy, man. I mean, I agree with you, though. Conference finals, though, bro. I mean, I think they get to the second round. If they get to the conference finals, though, bro, I'd be excited. You feel me? But for sure. Yeah, bro. I mean, this is, this is going to be a crazy year, though, man. Like, I feel like it's building up. So I, I'm excited about that, man. Sure, but like you said, bro, it, it I don't know, man. I just feel like everything would have to go right just because, I mean, you got guys like Lou Dort, you know, Isaiah Joe we've never seen in the goddamn playoffs, along with Shea as the number one option. So there's a lot of question marks around that team. So I feel like I'd take the other three teams in the top four over them, to be honest, just due to that. You know what I'm saying? So but other than that, they're talented. Basically, bro, what I'm hearing is you're saying that they go as far as Shea takes them. You feel me? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, pretty much. Because, okay. like, like I, I said, I bro, we, that. We never seen Shea as a first. I mean, we seen him in the playoffs, but not as a first option. You know what I'm saying? So we just gonna have to see what Shea can do because he does get a lot of foul calls. We don't know if that's gonna is gonna go down the same way in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? We just gotta see. But I don't know, man. It's tough, man. I do love that team, so I am kind of rooting for him, but not really since they compete competing with my Clippers. So I don't know, man. Yeah, bro. Hey, yeah. Fly your Clipper flag, bro. It's cool. Sure. But real quick, bro, let's jump into the jump ball segment and then we'll get back into the NBA let's trans- do it. trade deadline reaction. You feel me? Sure. So let's get this jump ball segment jumping, man. Do it, man. All right. So before we get into our jump ball question of the week, let's shout out our MVP of episode 67. Mm-hmm. This is one of my guys, man. I love dude, man. He can't guard me in basketball. He can't guard mm-hmm. me. He ain't trying to see me on the court. Yeah. But shout out Mark Booker Jr., man. Oh, I seen you comment on the video, bro. I was like, damn, that's my this, this that's my guy, man. That's my guy. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to you, bro. We appreciate the love. We appreciate the support, bro. Thank you for engaging with our video, engaging with our content, man. You are the MVP of episode 67, and you still can't guard me. Hey, yo, shit. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. He I don't think he could guard me either. I hooped with him a time or two, and I ain't gonna lie, he was on my team, but I was carrying him. So shout out to Mark Booker, though. We're gonna get back on the damn, course. Damn, said he put you in the book bag, bro. Man, oh, God, I had to, man. I had to. He was just breaking and shit out there. He was setting some decent screens. But other than that, nah, man, he got to step his game up. But, no, nah, shout out to Mark Booker, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm weak, bro. Hey, we got to get back on the court, man. He he. One time he swiped over my story, you know, talking about you still at the Y or you still going at the gym right now. And it was like two hours after. I'm like, bro, what the fuck do you think? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, no, nah, shout out to Mark Booker, man. He, he funny as hell, man. Appreciate the love. Always showing, you know, support on the videos. Uh, But, yeah, man. Keep tapping in. We appreciate you. And, yeah, you can't guard either of us. So, yeah. Nah, yeah, bro. I mess with bro heavy, though, bro. Shout out to you, bro. Appreciate the love. Yes, sir. And if you want to be the, ep- the MVP of our next episode, man, all you got to do is engage with content, man. Like, share, subscribe. Tell a friend and tell a friend. 
It could be the MVP's episode, man. So. Let's jump into this jump ball question of the week, man. This is a pretty, this is a pretty rough and tough question, man. Yeah, for real. For us too, man. Also, my brother, man, that's a huge part of this podcast, man. Music is a large part of our lives, man. Amen. At least for me, Coop, I I know you too, bro. Every day, bro, it's music. You feel me? Okay. Oh, and I feel like in today's day and age, bro, we have so much access to different types of music. Any music we want, we can get it in seconds, bro, on our cell phones. You feel me? Just look it up on this, man. You get on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, whatever you get on, man. So much music out here, man. But for the rest of your life, if you had to listen to two albums, two. <laughs> That's tough. And, if, and, and the viewers, man, I want y'all to comment down below. Let us know. Two albums for the rest of your life. Only two. Yeah. What two albums would that be, man? And why? I want to know why. Let me know. Man, bro, you asking a very tough question that, you know, kind of put me on the spot. But honestly, I, the only two albums I could come up with that quick that I really be listening to on the daily. The first one I'm going to go with Mailbox, Mailbox Money by Nipsey Hussle, man. You got hella bangers oh. on this on this album, you know what I'm saying? Like, where your money at? You got Killer, Hunter the Show, Status Symbol. Mm -hmm. You got Count Up That Loop. Only a some good bangers right there, bro. That's what I'm saying. Some shit that good gets bangers, you man. on the gym. You could be at work, you know what I'm saying? You know, feeling kind of down. These songs to get you energized, you know what I'm saying? So that that's definitely one album for me. And then another album for me that, you know, I just thought of real quick was Deeper Than Rap by Rick Ross. Came out in 2009. One of my favorite all-time albums, man. I really do like this, okay, this album. Okay, okay, okay. You got Mafia Music, Usual Suspects. You got, you know, uh, Valley of Death. You know what I'm saying? Cigar Music, that shit fire. So honestly, bro, these are probably my two my two favorite albums that, or at least some of them that I'll be listening to on a daily. You know what I'm saying? You can't go wrong. You know what I'm saying? So, man. yeah, man. It's a tough question that you put me up, man. I couldn't really think of much at the time. So I was like, man, I got to just go with two I love. Bro, I ain't even mad at you, bro. Like, it's a tough question because, like, Obviously, it's hypothetical, bro, but, like, for the rest of your life, it's, like, what kind of realistic listening to, bro, because sometimes you can listen to something so much, you be like, damn, bro, let me take a break from it, you feel me? Because exactly, I've yeah. that with music before, bro, like, I've heard a new album, I listen to it, I play it so much, I'm like, damn, it, it'd be a few months before I listen to it again, just because I play the music so much, you feel me? Yeah. But for me, bro, this is kind of an easy question, because the first one for me is going to be J. Cole, Friday Night Lights. It's not really, oh, not yeah. really an album, it's kind of a mixtape, you feel me, but... Yeah. Just that collection of music, bro, is it's so uh meaningful to me, bro. I hear that. It's meaningful to me. And there's so many different, like uh kind of like the Nipsey album, Mailbox Money that you're talking about, bro. Like there's so many different songs that represent different things to me. You feel me? It's different moods, it's different uh feelings, bro, different vibes in that album for me, bro. Like for there, like there's so many different songs on there, bro. Like before I'm gone, you feel me? Like these are the songs that that really like, especially growing up, bro. Like it just they just they just mean something to me, man. Um, too deep for the intro. If this mm. too deep for the intro, I'll find another use. But just in case it's perfect, let me mm. introduce. Yeah, this song, man. Like that stuff. Them songs right there, man. Like I I could really listen listen to that for the rest of my life <laughs> because it's That's so crazy. important. There's songs that you could just vibe to. You feel me? There's songs you can work out to. There's songs you can work to. There's something, bro. They just get you right, man. Back to the topic, freestyle, man. Mm -hmm. Bill Magic enchanted, and yeah. then two faces, man. It's two faces. Yeah. Hey, this right here, man. I got a dollar in the dream, bro. Bangers. This, 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 this tape right here, bro. Obviously, J Cole has a lot of money now, bro. He, he, he's really getting to it, bro. He's on tour with Drake. He's a legend, bro. One of the greatest rappers of all time. But yeah. this right here, it came out in like I think it was like 2009, 2010. Something like that, man. But you could tell, bro, was really like he was hungry, man. He was yeah. hungry in this album. You feel me? And I, I could just, I could just tell, man. So this album right here, bro, I could, I could listen to it for the rest of my life. But then at number two spot, bro, I was like, damn, I don't know if I want to listen to just rap. You feel me? Yeah, I heard you. It's just rap. That's, that's what I was struggling with. I was like, fuck. Yeah, I'm like, to I want to get an R and B joint on there. You feel me? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I was like, fuck it. But bro, I, man. It's tough. J. Cole, bro. And then I'm gonna have to go with Tupac, bro. Tupac, hey, I respect Tupac, it. bro. Like I respect hey, it. I'm gonna have to go with Tupac, but that's one of my guys, man. I feel like uh and I got a few albums that I can really go with, bro, but I feel like it's only right. Where's my uh thing at, bro? Where's my thing at? 
Oh, thank you, man. There it is. Here oh. we go. Probably yeah, it's, it's probably gotta be Tupac, man. I mean, let's do all eyes on me, bro. Let's do all eyes on yeah, you me. Can't, bro, that's a classic. Let's do all eyes on me, bro, because Tupac is not just a rapper to, to me, bro. He's more of a he, he, I don't know, he's kind of like me, bro. He like he's kind of like a philosopher, you feel me? He kind of he looks at things differently, bro. He breaks down the breaks down the world and how he sees it, bro, through his eyes, you feel me? So I feel like I feel like him, bro. Also, uh shout out Scarface too, bro. Mm, yeah. Legend, bro. They both got some bangers. But yeah, bro, I just I feel like there's there's so much uh music on here, bro, that that can really get you through whatever you're going through, you feel me, bro? And it's like you got love songs on there, bro. You got you got some real music that energize you, bro. Also, yeah, bro, this this is just a, a real good album right here. You feel me, man? It's just a real good album. All eyes on hold on. Hold on. <laughs> shout out to uh shout out to Apple Music, man. If you're on Spotify, you're lame. You feel me? Yeah, I'm good. Hey man, I hear yeah. Hey, does Spotify do that, man? You see? Yeah, it? yeah moving, bro. He he alive, bro. He's still alive. Yeah. You feel me? Yes, sir. Yeah, bro. It's just it, it's so much stuff on there, man. I'm gonna go with those two albums, man. Tupac, all, all eyes on me, and then the project Friday Night Lights. Yeah, bro. Yeah, it's, can't go wrong with either of them, to be honest. Cool, bro. Remind us of yours again, bro. You had a Rick Ross album, then you had Mailbox Money by Nipsey Hussle. Yes, sir. I had Deeper Than Rap by Rick Ross, man. Like I said, a lot of lot of bangers on there, man. A lot of bangers. You know what I'm saying? So you can't go wrong, man. Can't go wrong. Go check it out if you haven't already. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, now let's jump. Let's jump back into yeah. Let's do it. Trade deadline special, man. Let's get to it, oh, bro. What else we got on? What okay, else we so gonna talk about, man? Trade wise. Yeah, man. So the next trade, man. Like I said, a lot of people had the Knicks being the trade deadline winner, and the trade that they made, man. They received Alec Burks, Boyan Bogdanovich, and in exchange, man, they gave up Evan Fournier, Malachi Flynn, Quentin Grimes, and two future second round picks, and also cash consideration. So. It really didn't send out that much, in my opinion, but they got back two very, very key rotational players. Alec Burke, who has played for the Knicks two years ago. I think he was a part of that 2020 playoff run that they had. And then they got Bojan Bogdanovic, who's averaging 20 points on the season for the Detroit Pistons. How are you feeling about this move, man? Do you think this moves the needle for the Knicks at all? So they got yeah, – I keep getting yeah. Bobex up. Bojan Bogdanovich, did I say his name right? Yes, sir. Bojan Bogdanovic. I, I like that, that pickup. He's silent. I like that pickup, man. I think he's going to crack the rotation uh, very, fairly quickly. And then, bro, I'm sorry. I just kind of – it's my, my my intrusive thoughts a little bit, bro. But every time I hear cash considerations, bro, what does that mean? Like, so basically they're just sending money over. How much money are they realistically sending over? You feel me? I'm yeah, sorry. I, I just had to ask that question. Like, does anybody know and understand what that what that is? No, man. Unless it's just a really cool player that we don't know about. Cash considerations. Yeah, bro. He be in a lot of trades, bro. I'm not going to lie. Oh, he yeah, he be in a lot of trades. He but no, nah, bro. These moves, who else did they add, bro? Who, who else did they add against? Repeat that for me. They added Alec Burks and also Boyang Bogdanovich. Alec Burks is, a, like I said, a pretty all decent right. baseball player for the Pistons. He's all right. Quick bucket. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I like the moves, bro. I, I like those two moves. Um. Extra depth. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say they really, like, moved the needle too much for the Knicks, bro. But as we were talking about before the show, bro, a lot of people see the Knicks making a deep playoff run. And the Knicks were in the second round last year, right? They were in the second round against the Heat. So I feel like that's not too crazy to say, like, they could really make it to the conference finals. Because once you get to the conference finals, bro, you know, there's always a chance you get there, man. You can get to the NBA finals, man. So I like those two moves, bro. Like you said, depth. Um, I'm a grade it and I'm gonna give it a B. I give B. it. A B. Yeah, I I'm, hear you. I give it a B. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm gonna have to agree with you. I'll probably give it an A just because, man. I really do like Boyan Bogdanovich, man. I really. I think this is a good piece off the bench. You know, what I'm saying the Knicks already look super tough right now. You know, what I'm saying they got one of the best backup bigs in Isaiah Hardenstein, while their you know their main big Mitch Robinson is out. So I, man, I really do like this team. If they can stay healthy, I think they can potentially make a a you know Eastern Conference Finals run. Maybe even the finals, man, if they stay healthy, if everything goes right, man, because the Bucks they looking vulnerable. Philly, we don't know about Joel Embiid. Boston, man, they seem to be the only really standout team. Besides, the Cavs have been playing really well, so we got to pay them some respect too. But like I said, man, Boyan Madonovich, he's averaging 20 points on the season. You know, he's shooting 41% from the three-point line. So I think he's going to add 
a lot of, you know, good things to this Knicks team, man. I, I can't lie. So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to give this move an A. But next up, man, we got Dennis Schroeder, a former Laker, man. He is going okay. to the Nets along with Thaddeus Young, who did get bought out. So Thaddeus Young is on the buyout market. Four uh, Raptors received, they received Spencer Dinwiddie, who also got bought out and was on, on his way to the Los Angeles Lakers, man. So it's not, it's not. first, man, how are you feeling about the Nets, you know, receiving Dennis Schroeder? Is it going to do anything for them? Obviously, they're not that great. But also, the Raptors received Spencer Dinwiddie, but they bought him out. Now he's on your team. How do you feel? Oh, shit. He talking this shit already. Here we go. <laughs> oh. Hey, don't count us out, man. Just go ahead and count us in your bill. Man. God damn it. <laughs> nah, bro, real talk, though, I'm excited about that move because I feel like all we needed was a, another ball handler, man. You feel me? Like, Ooh. we got D-Lo. We got AR. You feel me? But yeah. I feel like Dinwiddie, I feel like he can make a huge difference, bro. You feel me? He can make mm -hmm. a huge difference. And I know LeBron wanted a lot of different moves to happen, bro. We didn't need to go add a DeJounte. We didn't need to add a Trey Young. You feel me? Yeah, I hear you. I know a lot of people are they down on Darvin Ham, but they down on a lot of the the role players on our squad, bro. But I feel like Dinwiddie, man, as a playmaker, as a scorer, he can really, really help our team. You feel me? Cool, Definitely, man. I know you a Clippers guy, bro. I know we kind of we we in town ride right with you, feel me? But how you feeling about that, bro? Be realistic with my squad, bro. Hey, you know I'm always. I, hey, one thing about me, I'm always keep it real, man. I always keep home, it real. Man. you know one thing about me, so I'm always you know paying. My, it's a it's a really good pickup. You know what I'm saying? Y'all didn't give up anything. So it was off the buyout market. You just added another player in, took one player out of the rotation. I really do like this move. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't know if it's really going to move the needle how it did last year for you guys at the trade deadline, but he, hey, hey, who knows, man? Maybe Spencer did with it. Maybe he wants something. He's trying to prove something. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to prove all the, all the doubters, all the haters wrong because as many of you guys know, man, he really does not get along with a lot of his teammates, it seems like. Like with Kyle Kuzma, they was talking shit on him. On that, it, bro. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, who knows what the hell that shit was about, but he's probably trying to prove something. He's trying to, you know, help the Lakers, obviously. He's got LeBron as a leader now, so I really do like this move. But as for Dennis Schroeder going to the Nets, I really don't even got no opinion about this shit. I ain't going to lie. I'd probably just give it like a C. I mean, he's a cool point guard, but y'all are kind of mid anyway, so I don't even know what y'all trying to do. Y'all trying to, like, rebuild. Y'all trying – you know what I'm saying? It's just like – I don't. I feel like they should have got rid of like Mikael Bridges and shit. A lot of their role players and try to acquire a pick, but they did the opposite. They trying to just say fuck it, let's be competitive. So, yeah, man, I'm gonna give that move a C. But yeah, yeah. but I'm a fan of Dennis Schroeder. But like you said, bro, it's not really moving the needle. You know, yeah. in either direction. You feel me? Yep. Um, the move though, I think a C is a fair a fair grade. You feel me? Yeah, I think it's a fair grade. Middle ground. Yeah, type shit. It's not really like it's not game changing, but it's not bad. You feel me? Yeah, he's a cool player. He's okay. cool. Yeah, he's so, gonna help. He's gonna help for sure. Yeah. But oh man, we got a we got a pretty controversial move that was released by the man who got traded himself. Patrick Beverly is on the way to the Milwaukee Bucks. Hey, Bev! Oh God, hey! In exchange for Cameron Payne in a 2027 second round pick. So you know the Bucks add more, you know, defense on this defense. team, more more aggression. You know what I'm saying? And a guy like Patrick Beverly and Cameron Payne. Yeah, man. Well, I don't think the 76 are really going to play him. They're probably just going to have Kyle Lowry come right in. But how are you feeling about Pat Bev to the Milwaukee Bucks? Is what they needed, man? Honestly, bro, I feel like it can't hurt, you feel me? Because, like, the Milwaukee Bucks are in a position where it's kind of like a boom or bust type season, you feel me? They have yeah. to win a championship where it's going to be a failure because you go out and you trade for a Dame Lillard, you got to win a chip, bro. You have to win a chip. You give up Drew Holiday, you lose a lot. That's probably, like, your best defensive player, bro. He's a leader, you feel me? You had in a Pat Bev who was not a huge name player, you feel me? Not like a crazy player, bro, but his impact cannot be measured, you feel me? Because he comes in. I don't know if you've seen it, bro, but bro was coaching. He on the sideline. Obviously, he has yeah. a relationship with his guy, Doc Rivers. He's on the sideline. He's coaching. He's he's like putting a battery in guys' backs, man. You feel me? So Amen. I feel like a, a, a Pat Bev cannot hurt your team, you feel me? He can only help. So I yeah. I feel like this move right here is not bad, but I'm going to give it a B plus. I mean, Pat Bev the, like to it. the Bucks, man. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I'm a fan. Yeah, bro. I'm gonna go ahead and give it the same grade, a B plus. That's I feel like that sounds pretty fair. Patrick Beverly, he adds, you know, everything you want in a guy, you know, like him. He's obviously not gonna come and impact your offense, but he's gonna be a hell aggressive. You they know don't need saying? him to though. They don't need exactly. him to. So exactly. So that's really all they need from him. You know what I'm saying? So I I like this move a lot. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man. Fuck. Hey, God. shout out Pat Bev and Rome, bro. 
huge fan of their podcast. I know a lot of athletes have podcasts, bro, but they have a really good podcast. Like, yeah. I'll sit there, I'll tap into their pod, bro. It's very entertaining, man. So, shout out to Pat Bev and Rome. Yeah, for sure, bro. Honestly, bro, there ain't many other trades we're talking about. I mean, we got Robin Lopez. Yeah, man, we got this Bucks trade between the Kings and the Bucks, obviously. Sending Robin Lopez cash considerations, another all star caliber player. No, I'm playing. Uh, to the Bucks receives. Draft rights to a player's name I actually cannot pronounce. So, yeah, man, Robin Lopez, he just got bought out. He ain't even on the team now, so he's on the buyout market right now. But you got another trade between – we're just going to go through these real quick, real brief, you know what I'm saying, the last couple of trades. You got the Raptors acquiring Kelly Olenek from the Utah Jazz and also uh, Oshe Abaji from the from the Jazz as well, that, that former KU player. Yes, sir. Uh, exchange for Otto Porter Jr., and Kara Lewis, and also a 2024 first round pick. So another minor trade. A lot of people thought Kelly Olynyk was going to, a, you know, a contender. Obviously not. He's going to the to Canada, his home. And then you also got the 76ers trading um, Daniel House to the Pistons, and also a 2024 second round pick and cash considerations in exchange for a 2028 second round pick. So minor trades, man. Minor trades going on. But, uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps up the trade deadline. Unless we got anything else to talk about, man, what's going on? So, bro, one question I want to ask you, ask you this too, but the first one is, is there any team during this deadline that you feel like should have made a move, you know, before the deadline that didn't make a move? Great question. Um, Honestly, bro, yeah. I mean, I feel like, I mean, there's a couple of teams, obviously. I feel like the Bulls are definitely one of those teams that should have got off the players that they do have just because you got guys like DeMar DeRozan who's on the last year of his contract, you know what I'm saying? So it would have been nice to get some value out of him because now he could just walk for nothing, you know what I'm saying? And then you also got guys like Alec Caruso who's playing probably some of the best basketball of his career. So you would think a team like the Bulls would be trying to capitalize on these guys that they may not have for that much longer and also because – they're just stuck in uh, mediocre, uh, me- mediocrity right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're just struggling. You know what I'm saying? They- they've been like this for years, though. You know what I'm saying? We was even talking before the show, like, about, you know, some of the highest, you know, or the most sold tickets across the NBA, and the Chicago Bulls are one of those teams just because of their fan base and just because it's Chicago. But they're not really putting that good of a product out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've talked about multiple times on the show before, man. Being stuck in mediocrity is just one of the worst spots you can be in in sports, you know what I'm saying? Because you're not bad enough to go get, you know, young players, but you're also not good enough to be contending for a championship. So the Bulls definitely should have got rid of their guys. Um, I mean, I've seen some people talking about the Lakers, but like you said earlier, bro, I'm really glad they stayed, you know, Pat, because they don't really got a bad team. Like just the other night, it might have been last night, actually, we've seen all five of their starters drop 20-plus points. So they're capable of winning games, but it's – a I mean, even Bill Simmons has talked about it. Um, also, Zach Lowe's talked about it. Like, players, man, they don't like, you know, being under all that pressure where it's like, if I mess up one time, I'm probably going to get traded. So the fact that the trade deadline's over, it probably puts them at ease a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? So we're probably going to see the Lakers play a little bit better. But other than that, bro, I feel like a lot of – I mean, you could say the Rockets could have made a couple trades, you know what I'm saying? I've seen a lot of people saying they should have got rid of Jalen Green. Uh, some people were talking about, you know, maybe the 76ers should have made a couple more moves if Joel Embiid comes back. But, like, other than that, I feel like the Chicago Bulls, at least for me personally, are the only team that I feel like should have made a move. You know what I'm saying? Not to get better, but just to, you know, get the guys out at the door that don't even need to be there no more. You know what I'm saying? Since they are not that great of a team. Let Kobe White do his thing. But, no, nah, man, they, they went the other direction. They said, fuck that. We keeping these guys to the end of the season. I mean, that's that's crazy because now they really might not get nothing back for DeMar DeRozan. I've seen so many Bulls fans complain about that too. Like, they've been they haven't done shit since since uh, MJ. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, they had D Rose, but other than that, they haven't really been on shit. So, kind of feel bad for the Bulls fans, man. They just want you know something to look forward to, but unfortunately, they can't have that. You know what I'm saying? But what about you, bro? You feel like any other team should have made a move? You know what I'm saying? You're talking about your Lakers earlier, but you even said that you was happy they stayed bad. But how you feeling, bro? Yeah, bro, there's really no team that I felt like, you know, needed to make a move. But as far as the Lakers, bro, I'm happy that they didn't do anything because there's really no move to make. 
As far as like a big splashy move, I feel like that was unnecessary. So I'm glad it didn't happen because you're just really putting the team at a, you're putting them in a bad spot. Like you're going short term and sacrificing the long term. You feel me? So I'm glad they yeah. st stood pat, bro. And I didn't even think about it like that, bro. But now that the deadline's over, bro, it is probably easier for players to go out there on the Lakers and just play, bro, and not have to worry about a mistake or what are they gonna say on Twitter? What is the media gonna say? Are they gonna trade? Like, bro, that that's that has to be an awful way to to live. It that has to be an awful NBA life, bro. I'll put it that way. But exactly. yeah, bro, that, that sounds rough. Definitely, bro. But I will say another team that, you know, probably should have made moves, you know, according to a lot of people is the Golden State Warriors. You know what I'm saying? Right now they're they're sitting at a 10 seed. They 25 and 25. You know, a lot of people wanted Wiggins to get out of there. Some people Yeah, but what move could they really have made though? Like, cause nobody really wants yeah. Wiggins. Bro. No, yeah, just, bro. I like Wiggins, bro, but nobody's yeah. gonna give up anything crazy for him. You 100 percent right, bro. And I feel like that's probably why they didn't, because if they traded him, they wouldn't get nothing back in return. That would be, you know, probably just as good or if not even any better than Andrew Wiggins at this point. So I agree with that, bro. So it's just it's tough bro, because bro, let me ask you this though. What's up? Do you think they should like consider well, you think they should have considered trading a Draymond Green or a Clay Thompson? I don't think they'll they'll ever do it, but do you think they should consider that? I mean to nah, build on Curry? I just don't think they will, bro, to be honest. I just feel like they mean too much to this team, like to the organization. But at the same time, if they were to trade one of the two, I would say Probably being being Clay Thompson, just for the simple fact that Draymond Green, he is still a pretty intricate part of this team, as we seen last night against the Phoenix Suns. So it's like Clay Thompson, man, he's just really been shooting them out of games. Like he even last night, bro, he was just every shot he shot, bro. I thought it was going in, but just ripped off the rim, found the rim, another rebound, fast break down the floor for the Suns. So it's like, man, I don't know. I love Clay Thompson. He's my favorite Golden State Warrior of all time, but. His time might just, I don't know, bro, because I don't think he's getting that good of a contract extension that he wants because I think he is a free agent after this year. So it's yeah, tough. That's going to get, that's gonna get icky, bro. That's going to get icky, man. It really is, man. But also another trade that we did forget to talk about that happened previously before the trade deadline was uh, Stephen Adams. It's not a big trade. Stephen Adams going to the Rockets from the Memphis Grizzlies. I don't know if you have anything to say about that. You know, I like Stephen Adams. I like Stephen Adams, bro. Yeah, and honestly, bro, I'm, I do too. That's the reason I brought up this trade, but also the fact that, like, it's kind of weird to me seeing um, the Memphis Grizzlies trade rotational guys like this because it makes it seem like they're just bad forever now. You know what I'm saying? Like, they still got John Morant coming back next year. You still got Desmond Bain. The fact that they traded a pretty intricate part of their team in Steven Adams and also Xavier Tillman to the Boston Celtics, I don't, I don't know, bro. I, I feel like it's a little weird for the Grizzlies, but that could just be me. You know what I'm saying? Now, maybe, I don't know, bro. Like, maybe they're just in, like, because I don't want to say, like you said, bro, there's still a, a a team that has a future, bro. Like, I don't know if it's, like, right to just to go into tank mode, but let's get rid of everybody out, out here, man, and just blow the team up. But I don't know, man. I feel like uh, they might have some plans I don't know about, bro. Yeah, hey, hey you're probably right, man. We've seen stuff like that before where teams look like, because teams are low enough for the offseason, bro. I think it's going to be a pretty crazy offseason. So. And plus, they're going to be in the draft. Granted, this draft ain't going to be that great. But, yeah, man. Um, The only thing other we can really talk about is a couple of the bio guys. You know, you got guys like Robin Lopez, obviously, Spencer Dinwiddie. Keelene Hayes, who we was talking about before the show, did get released by the Detroit Pistons, <laughs> man. Former seventh overall pick in 2020. Crazy. Hey, bro. Crazy how just – Shit, Life comes at you fast, huh? <laughs> Man, bro, I really didn't. I thought he was gonna be decent when he was drafted, but shit, I, I was way off. You know what I'm saying? But maybe he can go find a you know a team like we were talking before the show. Maybe he can go to a team like the Spurs, help Victor finally get the ball passed to him. You know what I'm saying? So if the other point guards don't do that, but yeah, man, I don't know. There's really no other moves. I mean, Minnesota they finally got a backup point guard in uh, Monte Morris. So I mean, that's another minor move, I guess. But other than that. I don't know. Yeah, man, I don't really got too much more to say. I guess the Orlando Magic could have made a move, but for a shooter, but they didn't. So, yeah, bro, I don't really got too much else to say on the yeah, NBA. Bro, I mean, let's get ready for you know a great second half of the season, man. We got the the All Star All Star Weekend coming up next weekend, man. Yeah. Super excited about that. We're mm -hmm. looking into live streaming that event, you know. So you guys can watch it with us, man, and, and we can just you know, you know, have a great time. You feel me? But yeah, man, let's let's lock in. Let's get locked in, man. Lock and loaded for you know the second half of the season, bro. See what happens. Um the West is is very uh 
competitive right now. The East has a few teams that we think can really make a run, man. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm excited. Me too. And we will see you guys next week. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you for tuning in. Peace. Yeah. Like I'm Conan, kind of a buff hands Switch the flow like it was broken I'm on the road, man Making plays just like DeRozan I shoot my shot And that shit wetter than the ocean I brag a lot But with the wind and come the boasting I made a lot From them apartments that I sold And he didn't make it up to college So them streets when he enrolled And I know I'm a scholar From the moments that I was exposed in